the Tiger Beetle sessions. Um, Wednesday, 2nd of February, session 15. Hey, Jorn, what's up? Hey, Isaac. Uh, pretty cool yesterday. So nice to get the bulk inserts done for the segmented array. Even just seeing that performance coming through in the test. Uh, branchless, you know, we just inserting into a node. If we need to split the node, all of that decision is just totally branchless. Creating nice um, memory slices, doing a whole lot of asserts, and then executing the copies. Uh, so now we're on to uh, bulk removes, right? Yeah, let's do the same, make the same magic happen for those, I guess. So yeah. I'll share my screen and we can get, yeah. get planning, I guess. Yeah. Um, do you want to just go straight to the whiteboard this time? Yeah. Yeah, let's do um, that. Is that screen share work, by the way? Uh, yeah, your screen share is up. Is it frozen? So... Oh, uh, it's frozen. Okay, now I see two. two yeah. Oh, no, uh, two it seems pairs. to be working. Cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I accidentally clicked on one. Of the, so I guess Discord doesn't care what screen I click on sometimes. So I clicked on the wrong screen for one of the one of the three clicks it makes me do. Okay. I, apparently, that didn't, that didn't matter. So uh, cool. um, I guess it so works you, fine. So you you still have to do that three-click thing to get the screen share. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's a Firefox bug or a Discord bug. I'm not sure which. I think it's actually Discord because Chrome doesn't have it. Yeah. Or it's a pipewire bug or WebRTC bug. There's just yeah. too much stuff going on in the stack. It's too complex <laughs> to really be bug. Yeah, um, I, lo I loved your comment yesterday about um, with the audio issue that there was on all hands. Like the this is the the Linux audio stack strikes again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's, it is getting better. Pipewire is pretty yeah. reliable for me so far. Yeah. I mean, I haven't, I haven't had any audio issues here at least. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Pulse Audio is definitely known for being unreliable. Yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, just yeah. while we while we get into the whiteboard, yeah. I was checking out some Entish quotes. You know, Lord of the Rings, the Ents and the Forest, Alice in yeah, the Forest. Yeah. So there is a pretty good quote yeah. from Treebeard where he says, "You know, have we made a decision?" And then he says, "No, we've just finished we've saying just good finished. morning." <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking back to some of the early like where we did all the design work, you know, we did a whole week just to come yeah. up with the right design for the manifest. Um, but now the ends are yeah. watching, so I'm glad we... we Indeed. Yeah. Here we've got all our removal stuff. I guess we can just do it in the same sheet, just scroll that stuff yeah. out of the way. Yeah. Cool. It's like a fine way to do things. Okay. Yeah. So, so removal is probably a bit different, right? Um, Background transparent. Um, we're going to start with like potentially two nodes of data. So we're, we're going to have the same constraint where we only remove up to one full node of data at once, right? Yeah. Um, probably. Yeah. Same Maybe constraint. it makes sense to do it differently. I'm not sure. So I'm just going to like kind of draw out what we could, what kind of situations we could have. Yeah. And I think we actually also need to examine a third node uh, here in this case because um, our data could be overlapping between the first two nodes, the data that we want to remove. Uh, okay. And then um, we want we, after the removal, we may then want to compact these two nodes into one node that's still less than half full. Then we may need to, we need to compact the third node as well. Um, we need to guarantee that all the nodes end up at least half full, except for the yeah. last node. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a case, which I'm going to sketch out now, where we can end up needing to look at all three nodes. So I guess I'll use purple for data that doesn't get touched and red for the data being removed. Yeah. That sound good? Yeah. Um, so there's like a little bit of purple data here, maybe. Then we have um, a bunch of red data. This node's like a little bit more than half full. And then we have some more red data here. This red data is less than a full node, of course. Um, then we've got purple data here. It's also like just over half. Yeah. Yeah, and so I think we can see that we would need to compact these all these three nodes together, essentially. Yeah. Um, in this case. Do we then have the case where this can cascade? So we end up having to actually go through the whole array. 
Oh no. Um, well, hmm, good question. Let's let's figure that out for sure. Um, so when we we have here two nodes essentially, um, you know, we it can't it can't cascade, and so the the maximum amount we can remove from we remove up to a node capacities worth of yeah. data. That's likely going to be split over two nodes. Let's always assume it'll be split over two nodes. I think that's the worst mm. case here. It's, if it's just in one node, then we just do what we do currently. Mm. Um, and I've, I've got a feeling we might need to consider the node to the left as well. Because, for example... I think we don't. Uh, what, if, what if we are these two nodes where there's red? Are the last two nodes? Um, that's it's fine for the last node to be half full or less than half full. Uh, okay, sure. Yeah. Okay, that helps. And so, what what happens in this case is, um, we have two nodes that are with the removed data over half full, but without it under half full, and together they're also under half full, and so. Once we do the removal, we'll see that we'll get, so I think, let's do it in, in kind of steps. Let's do it like this. Let's do like another step where we then go to, down to just one node, where we then just have this data. Oops. We now got like kind of this data and this data. This is like the, kind of the first step and then we can copy all this stuff. So we're going down to like we can get rid of that one node. Um, that's that step one, and then step two is we just join these two nodes together, and these actually yeah. end up fitting in one whole node in one yeah. node together. This one's yeah. a bit longer. We'd have to do something differently. So maybe I'll do that. <coughs> um, so let's make this node like just really full. <coughs> like all the that's step one. Yeah. Yeah, assuming that this node's completely full, which is like the worst case for splitting nodes, I think, or cascading, cascading or whatnot. Yeah. Um, but as you can see, that we don't actually have a problem here. Because what we do is we we join this data with this data, and we move like the first half of this, the first bit of this data to here to make this one over half full, and yeah. we then move the rest of this data to the start of this node, which yeah. we already have code to do. Um. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I think the only difference from what we're doing currently is that um, we need to handle the deleted data being spread across two nodes and then move this data to the start of the node. And then, then if, once we get to this point, though, we can just run our current, our already existing code. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Yeah, and so there's the other case where this node is exactly half full. Um, in that case, um, we would just, we wouldn't, we would then join these two nodes together and delete this node completely instead yeah. of just distributing the data between the two nodes. And I think our code already does that too. Um, just trying to figure out, because we make the assumption that nodes, are, that our nodes start in half full, but I think we don't need that assumption for this algorithm to work correctly. Because uh, it's okay for this node to be entirely empty. Yeah. Um, for one of the nodes to be entirely empty. The second node has to be at least half full, but the first node can be, or no, it doesn't even have to be. Even if this is the last, well, it's only in the case of the last node we can, where we can allow it not to ha be half full. Because if it's not half full, we can't guarantee that the resulting node will be at least half full. Um, but if it is half full, then we can't guarantee that. Because then we have one of two cases. Either um, this um, node the data here, if this node's half full or at least half full, then we know that we can produce um, at least one half full node, maybe two. Because um, if, 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 if the data in the first node fits into this empty space, then it's just one at least half full node. If it doesn't fit, yeah. um, that means we've got too much here. Or it means we, that means we overflow of the full node capacity, which means that by definition we've got two half full nodes, or enough data to, to fill two half full nodes. Yeah. Yeah, I've just got one. Maybe this is a curveball. Um, let's say we're removing so much red that the the two little purple blocks 
in the top left are are like literally one element each. Okay. Then so, um, so you yeah, very very tiny. Yeah. I can't even resize that anymore. I made it yeah. too small. <laughs> okay, that's I think that's still fine though. Um, okay. See if they're one okay. element each. And what do you what would you try to make this as? Is the edge this, case? This one's ex exactly half full, and we're not at the end of the okay. array. We're in the middle. So this one's exactly half yep. full, and those are one each. So yep, that's fine. What we okay. do is we just um, we okay. leave these here and we copy this to here. Yeah. And we delete and, this node. And we're fine. Okay. And then the other thing could be where. Okay, uh, red is is just one element. So red, red spans both nodes, uh, but it's one element on each side. Um, so those those two nodes are exactly half full each, and red is one element. So and it okay. and it's, it spans two nodes. I, I'm not. I, I'm just uh, thinking as as we go. You know, just think like how can we be tricky? Yep. Uh, and then, yeah. Then purple takes it up exactly to half. So removing half means that we've got two nodes that are less than half full. Uh, and then, then the next node is also so ex exactly so half. Them in the yeah. In that uh, case, we can combine the two nodes that are less than half full into one node that is over half full. And it's always the case you can do yeah, if, if yeah. both are both less than half full. Yeah, good. Um, yeah. Nice. So yeah, I'm actually thinking this one will be a lot easier than the other one, but maybe oh, that's just my... Yeah. Naive. yeah. No, no, well, maybe I think we've got some preparation behind us now. We know, we know like, the style, the... The, the way to solve it. Yeah, we've, we've got the, the that thing. could be. But it also yeah. seems to be a lot closer to the single element case because the rebalancing code will be the same. Yeah, we already have the code to do this part. Yeah. We just need to add the code to do, do this step. And Isaac, can it can it be that um, the the node to the right, like let's look at the bottom case. So the node to the right is almost full. So we can't just. Which one? This one. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, let's do let's do the bottom one now, where now we've got just on the left hand side we've got two thin purple elements left. Are you talking about the second state step yeah. of this one, or what are we talking about? Uh, that that one there where you are. Yeah. Now we can just make the other one so also. The, the, what would the setup look like? Like this, or would it be more like this thing? Yeah, it's more more like that. Um, so we're gonna delete okay. the delete the red, and the two purples are gonna be just maybe two elements each. So just Pretty very small. very little. But on the right, it's gonna be. Uh, oh, it's still fine. Yeah, the right can can be also just under full, but not enough space for both. So then we're going to have to split, right. split some from the right. And, but we should get about half full then, right? Yeah. Um, I think the only tricky part here will be avoiding unnecessary copies. Yeah, I'm not worried about that case. Um, so... Oh, I've, I've, yeah, I've got it now. Uh, so this, this way, where you're selecting now. So those are like one element each. Now on the right, that node is 60% full. Okay, it's like... Uh, okay, okay, no, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, it's fine, because then the other two are going to fit into the node. I'm, I'm trying to think of where yeah, we have... Fit in here. I'm trying to think of where we split the big node because we can't put the other things in it, so we split it into two, and then both are under half. But it, it doesn't work like that. 
So it doesn't work though, because no. if it's if it's yeah, that's just kind of how this this these things like work. That's like the whole property that makes segments in array work. Yeah. Like it's cascading. Yeah. Skating. yeah. Um, I'm confident this works out. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm the, the tricky part. Well, that we want to avoid unnecessary copies. That's gonna make that's what the only thing that can make things hard things hard now. I think. Yeah. So we want to make sure we only copy this. We don't like copy this unnecessarily. We only copy this one once. Yeah. Um, and so if we do it like this, where we do the intermediate step of doing this, then we actually have to copy this one twice potentially. Yeah. Um, do like one copy to here and then another copy to here. Yeah. And so. Um. Yeah, we might want to think about how to go from just from this step to the end configuration directly, like we yeah. do for the. Um, yeah. Def definitely. I think that'll yeah. be simpler also in the end. It will be nicer code, less, less, I think, I think you're right, but I think it'll be yeah. harder because this is, this is yeah. pretty easy to do the, with any immediate step. Yeah. Because we already have the code that does this part. Yeah. But I think what we want, really want to do is go straight from here to the end. And so what does the end look like here? Um, we, I, I think the, the way we need to solve it is we need to enumerate all the possible combinations of how we could basically we need to enumerate all the final memory zones the final memory slices which can be zero length and we've we've also got to bring in the concept yeah, of yeah. three nodes so a b c and all the and give names you know this is going to be a head a tail or yeah i think we just need to start going through doing this and so this is like one this can be our first enumeration, but I think it's a pretty general case. We never, we don't have any zero length slices here. At least we don't, yeah. not that we know of yet. And yeah. Then what we end up with at the end is not actually this, but we want to end up with a single node. We'll, um, assuming that we got a little bit of space here. Yeah. We want to end up with just at least one node. It looks like this. Yeah. It's just like a little bit of space at the end. That's our goal. Yeah. And, and some, so sometimes we might have to um, sometimes we might have to take some from the right hand side, but not all of it. Because the right hand side might be totally full. Yep. Uh, so that's gonna be the trickier part. So that, that would be yeah. another case. Um, yeah. And so let's say we make these purple bits a little bit bigger on these first nodes. Um, yeah. This one can stay make kind of small maybe, but mm. it's still well, it's, it's too big now still. So what we end up with here is then we have to then split this into two. Um, I'm just gonna like actually make two of them here so we can kind of see where the split ends up being. Yeah. We can think about what the original slices need to be. That's it. Not sure how big it's going to be yet, though. But it'll be something like that. And we're going to have two nodes down here. Okay. Um, let me just delete like these things for now. We can just copy the ones from up above. So they're all the same size, and it works yeah. out. So that's the first one in order. Then we'll have this one. Nice. And we'll have whatever this one ends up being. So this one's going to go here. This one's going to go here. Yeah. That's that's kind of how it work, works out. Yeah. Oops, I meant to copy those um, instead of moving them. See the before and after properly. Yeah, nice. Yeah, this is kind of it. Like we need to see all the options, all the split points. Yep. And that last one is. I just think I don't actually see more split points than. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. That last one's not going to be too difficult. It's just a question where we first have to move the head, and then we shift the tail to the left. Yep. There is another exactly. one. Exactly. Um, yeah. There's another one. I see too. another one right away. Yeah, if you copy that, um, where you, you only remove red from one node, and you've got purple on the right of the red. That's exactly what I was about to say. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we've got a block of red in the middle of a node. 
We've got purple on left and right of it. Then this node is just gone. Then we've got this following node here. We should maybe leave a little bit more space here. Just so we have like a little bit of yeah between the different cases. Okay. And here we've got then. Okay, we gotta make these right, about the right size. Um, let's see. I think this split becomes a bit different. A little bit different now. It's more like this. I think we still don't. This still doesn't fit quite inside that. Um, yeah. This is the case where this doesn't fit in yeah. one node then, yeah. the remaining purple. Um, right size. Yep. Yeah. Maybe. It looks like it's over half now, and this yeah. one also looks to be about right. Cool. You know, maybe I'm thinking we can break the problem down into two phases and we won't lose efficiency and it will actually, um, it will make it easy to think about. So we, the first phase, okay. yeah, the first phase is get rid of the red and do that using our approach that we had yesterday. The, all the memory slices, um, all of that. And then the next phase is, is compact from the next node. And the reason why it might help to have it like that is because sometimes we compact from the next node. Sometimes we're only removing red from two nodes. Sometimes we remove it from one. Um, so we've got a variable number of nodes. That's kind of the... Yeah. Whereas yesterday we only we always have two nodes, A and B. Now we've got A, B, C or just A, B. And whether we take from C or yeah. take from B it changes. So maybe the compact phase can be distinct and, and it's not going to be less efficient, but it will be easier to think about. Um, how do you keep your efficiency though? Or what are you proposing like do between the stages? Do you like copy, for example, um, there could be cases where we ended up doing a copy then during the first phase that we then reverse or like move again during the second phase, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. So that's the point of doing it all in one phase instead yeah. of avoid or copying the same thing twice. Yeah. Um, yeah, because sometimes, you know, like if we're going to merge with the right hand block, then. We, we're either going to have to copy the whole of the right-hand block to another node, or we're going to shift it in the same node anyway. It's the same thing. Yeah. I think I see another interesting case to look at. I'm going to put it first, though. Um, this will be the case where we're like, we have... We end up with so much purple that we, this is just the one that we're not covering yet. We just have a lot of purple. And so we don't even split this thing, this node. This is where we, we, we start with three nodes, we end up with three remaining nodes. Yeah. Because we aren't, just aren't covering yet. So maybe that yeah. needs to be handled. Yeah. And so this one doesn't get moved at all then. That just stays there. Yeah. This one gets moved just to the start of its node. This is actually a pretty easy case, but I yeah. thought we needed it too. Yeah. And then we should also examine some of the cases where red we're res inside one node. I guess we just did one of those here. Yeah. Um, does that make it a little bit better, more visible? No, I, the other way is nice. Um, that's very cool. Yeah. I think uh, this one like is a good is a good medium. Okay. Um, just make the colors a little bit brighter or more bold. Okay.
And so here we only need to do one copy, really. It's just to move this to the start of the node. Yeah. That's actually a pretty easy yeah. case. Yeah. So then there's the case where, like, this one ends up being less than half full, but this one isn't. Yeah. Does that mean we then leave that one alone and just merge these two? I think so. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I think yeah, it's it's more difficult than inserts. Hmm? It's more difficult than it is. In, in inserts. Yeah. I think you're right. But it's also, um, so I think we can. I think we can do two steps. I think what mm -hmm. we do is we just don't actually copy stuff in the first step. We just kind of make the slices. Um, yeah. And we we like move them around semantically, but we don't actually do any copies yet. And so the yeah. slices stay where they were. And then we do like the first step then, and then we do the second step where we do all the copies. Yeah. And we only do the copies once. Um, yeah. I think I think breaking the problem down into those two steps is very valuable. Yeah. Just for our ability to understand it. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, cool. I'm with you. I think that's nice. The, the idea that we can take the slices and then do conditional logic on them but we still haven't done a copy yet, yeah. so it's okay. Exactly. Yeah. 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 The the other, um, just, just, just throwing it out as an option, is when we do like individual removes, we don't worry too much. Like we just remove the element, shift the remaining nodes. Then we see, do we need to compact? So we could always do like a hybrid approach where we not, we're not to the extreme of avoiding the mem copy, but we're in the middle. So we're still pretty yeah. e efficient. So what you could do just as a simpler approach is just remove the red from the node, shift, shift the stuff, see, are we less than half full? Okay, let's combine with the next node. Because that way you still, yeah. it's a bit more mem copy, but it's not the 10 times factor. Uh, Yeah, you still amortize it over the batch, right? Yeah. Yeah. That that could be a first like stepping point. Um, I think it's also that's also also quite easy to do. I think. Yeah. So we could just do that first, and then, um, think about like while we're doing it, whether it makes sense to do the more complex approach as well or not. Yeah. And how much that would really save. Um, yeah. see, what are the cases in which it really really save stuff? Um. So this, I think this last approach, is it right? It's basically like divide and conquer. So we just, we remove, if we go top left, we'll remove that little bit of red. See, oh, um, okay, so I guess we have to remove the, the red from all the nodes. Then we will go to the left node and see, oh, is it less than half full? Let's merge it with the next one. Oh, is it less than half full? Merge it with the next one. That's, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And so... I'm wondering if we actually don't have much of a problem, though, because I'm not seeing a place where you really introduce two copies for something. Because for this one, we would just... We would see this one, okay, yep, it's less than half full, grab, go to the next one. The next one also happens to be less than half full, so we just put it there. Yeah. Like, we don't actually do any copies right away when we delete the red stuff, as long as we just don't copy this thing first until we know where it's going. Because the, the, I guess the... the the naive approach where you del delete the red stuff, then copy this to the front of its node, and then do That's the merge it. algorithm. But we don't yeah. really need to do that. No. Um, if, I think if it's we, not that if, hard to. If, yeah. If we keep, we we can maybe think of it both ways. So we just don't do the copy, but we still think of it as the. Yeah. 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 Um, and so we just, I think we just have, we'll have, well, would we always have exactly one slice of what's left over? No, we don't. So, in the in these cases with three nodes, where the red spans the gap, we've got like one slice per node of what's in the node. Mm. In this case, it's a little bit different. Um, here we've got two slices in the same node. And so this case, yeah, that's the only case though where we have two slices in the same node that we're that we're dealing with. Yeah. Um, this is this is kind of a detail of like after what after we decide to do the copy. Yeah. But then we just. We just handle this case slightly differently from this case, so that they're just that we just have to handle the case where there's one node versus two nodes differently. Yeah. Um. So this is where we have um, 
A and B versus just B or something. Yeah. Or just A. I'm not sure. Oh, I kind of want to call it just A. We have yeah. A and C instead of A, B, and C. What What I'm thinking might help too is to see it as, like you say, so we grab all the memory regions that we want, and then we think of it like instead of A, B, C, we think of it as a pipeline. You know, like a like a ball bearing game where you've got some tube and you drop the ball bearings in. And what okay. we've got, we've got a tube where we've got the ball bearings, our slices are at different points and there's air in the middle. But we, we identify our ball bearing slices. And then at one point, we just tilt the tube so that they all move. So it isn't, it isn't really ABC, it's just a slice of nodes or, and we need to do something that they just then all move to the left when we do our mem copy. Because that way it doesn't matter whether we've got three nodes in total or two. Uh, it's it's it becomes more of a loop than having a, a static number of variables. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we that probably is helpful. Yeah. We we kind of just need to um, const construct an input pipeline of ball bearing slices, um, of source slices, yeah. and we just so push actually, push them into the three pipeline. slices maximum. Yeah. Because even even if we have because like the two cases we're always gonna have like before and after the red region and so that could be split between nodes or it could not be split between nodes. Yeah. Um, do we need to know about that though to do the copies correctly? Like where this input data is coming from? No. Well, we need to delete the node in the case where we have an extra node. Yeah. So we we basically um, have a we have an input pipeline of ball bearings and we have an output. But we have a source pipeline and a target pipeline, and we just have to fill up the source pipeline with the ranges, which is pretty easy. And then when we execute the copies, we literally writing, we just shifting stuff into the target nodes. Just have to be careful that we don't overwrite. We do the right kind of copy. And then afterwards we see, yeah. okay, what is the length in nodes of our target pipeline? Okay, let's drop the last node. It's no longer needed. But if everything is just yeah, shif okay. shifting to the left. I think the, I think not overwriting the existing data gets a lot trickier if we don't know which nodes the data are, is in. Um, but it's it's all seems like it's shifting to the left. Yeah, but so you, you can copy. So you, I guess you can, you can. Yeah, I guess okay. Yeah, it's only gonna shift to the left, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's one way to think about it. There's also the case where, you know, I guess we can always just set it to the left. Yeah. That works out. And then, and I think this, this is gonna work out, I think. And then it's actually- Start trying to program this? Yeah, it's pretty um, easy if, if we think of it just as two pipelines, um, source and target, and at the end, delete the nodes yeah, that are- Yeah, so we have a, a list of slices, like maximum of three. Yeah. Um, and you know, we always have three slices, but two of them, some of them could be zero length. That's the best good way to do this. Yeah. Um, we always have this slice, this slice, and this. I'm treating this as one slice, both of these together. Um, the split actually comes in later when we decide to copy stuff. Yeah. Um, and so then we just start filling up our. Or we, well, first we think we I think the first thing we do is like calculate how many elements we have all together mm. to determine how many nodes we want to result in. Hmm. Um, and then we divide, so it's either going to be two nodes, one node, or three nodes. And um, this case is actually, now we messed up because this should be over half. So yeah. we do have three nodes here in this yeah. case. So if it's three nodes, um, well, we see, we don't want to unnecessarily copy these things though. Cause like here, you don't actually have to copy these ones or these ones because this is already over half. So. We don't. We don't want to copy this. We don't, we could like we could. It'd be valid to like really re rebalance this stuff to make it evenly distributed between the three nodes. But we don't need to do that. No, no. Um, uh, so we can just do it when we execute the pipeline. We see is the previous node. Mm. I think we want. I think we have to look at them all at once. I think by like in the, looking at them only in series doesn't get us all the information we need because we want to see where to make the splits up ahead of time. Yeah, but like down, um, down there, Isaac, um, um, the second from the bottom, 
we uh, just one down. Uh, so one one more down, where you've got the red. That that's it. Yeah, up top. So yes. Yeah. So those two slices we would put into our pipeline, and then on the right, we would just always add the next node that we didn't remove from, but we would add that whole purple thing as our slice. We wouldn't yep. even try up front to calculate which part moves. So then, sure, yeah, I'm, and, I'm agreeing with you there. We always yeah. have three slices in the pipeline. Yeah, so we've got, we've got two and then we've got the big one. Um, then, then we literally just, ex we tilt our ball bearings, um, copy to the left, but maybe then we just see, is the node more than half full? Okay, then we don't need to do well, more. Well, that's what I'm saying. Before you copy, you have to see whether you want to copy at all yeah. or not. Yeah. Um, because if if the case if it's the case that these that this spread's smaller than, and these yeah. purples already fill up half the node, then you don't want to copy. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you also need to determine like how much to copy. Um, so maybe based on the based on how much is in this node and how much these two are together. So I think you yeah. really need to examine the total number of elements between all these slices or all three slices. Well, what, um, you, could, what you could also do is take the ball bearing idea, only apply it to the nodes where elements are removed, then, then execute the pipeline because those have to be shifted anyway to the left. Um, and then once that's um, done- Always, yeah. They in this case they don't only this one does, but it stays within the same node. Okay, but uh, but when we execute that pipeline, we can just add a check if if the if the if the target node we're in is already more than half full, then we don't have to do that. Uh, but we do we do still have to shift it left within the node it's in. But that could be quite yeah. sim simple that little check, and then once we've executed that ball bearing pipeline. Then we can check. Do we need to do it again with the one on the right? I don't know. Um, yeah, I think we're we now are, are talking like too abstractly about the implementation details. I think we should just get writing code and see how it works out. Um, yeah, but I mean, we, we I think we are, understand the problem we, fairly well now. Yeah, um, we, I just want to check that we can make it work before we code it. Like the, are you? What do you think? Are, are we going to just have a it input pipeline um, of the three slices. I and think I think it's just going to be three slices. I think a pipeline, I think that's confusing me. I think it's not an abstraction that's useful with a fixed amount of data. Yeah. There's always going to be three input slices. Some of them might be so, zero length, some of them might be more. So I There's think always going to be three nodes. Yeah, yeah. So I, I um, think of it just as like a pipe, like a metal pipe, and we we just put yeah. stuff into it and there's gaps between it. Um, so we put our slices in that are gonna survive and then we just tilt the pipe so that it moves to nodes to the left. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that I think that, that's that's sim oversimplifying the problem and making it, that's because we have these cases where we don't wanna copy stuff. We don't but always that, wanna shift everything like this. Yeah, no, but that's fine. But you know what, like, even if we do do that, we do ensure that things are becoming more balanced and we do free up memory. So that's not a, if we do, yeah. it, it, and that's only in one case, um, it's not. I think it's not that tricky to not do that though. I think it's actually pretty simple. Okay, um, but so, so that's what I think too. Whereas the, the idea of the thing, of the pipe that you shift to the left, as you're executing going from source buffers to target buffers, you can have a little simple check to see if um, if that one yeah, is just stay, I think we're talking stay about, in this mode. We're talking about pretty much the same thing, just with different names and implementation details. Okay. Um, no, well, then, then I'm just going to get coding and see how it works out. Let's, let's go um, for it. I, f I find the pipeline idea very, it, for, for me, it, it helps, you know, to to see like yeah, I mean, to make it intuitive so, you know here we go okay so we got remove elements now we want remove batch is what we need here um this is the remove elements old old i guess yep so we can have remove elements new 
do our batch thing. Like up above. And then we can have our... Did I hear ball bearing pipeline? Is that a ring buffer? Yeah. Um, what I've we're working on answer. right now is. Go ahead. I can just do some boilerplate. Um. <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah. Maybe while you do that, I'll, I can explain. So we, yeah, it's we in the LSM domain, and we've got a whole lot of data on disk, uh, and the data is all sorted by key range, um, and. Within the key range, we break it up into fixed size tables. So you can think of like a four meg table, a 64 meg table. And then for, obviously, because we can address a lot of data, then you have a lot of these tables. So you could have like a million of these tables or two million. Then for each table, we've got a little bit of metadata that we keep in memory because we need to know how to get to these contiguous key ranges on disk. So if we're trying to do a lookup for a certain key, which tables might contain that key range, then we need this, we need basically just pointers in memory, you know, tracking the location of these million tables. So that metadata is like 64 bytes per table. And basically what we do is we've got a segmented array structure for each level of the LSM, where we then store these 64 byte table info metadatas. And, um, but now the problem Isaac and I are solving is we, when compaction happens, we want to be able to remove multiple tables from this array structure. And we don't just want to remove one table at a time because we know we've got to remove like 11. And if we can remove all 11 at once, we save like a recursive mem copy shifting of all the stuff. Uh, which maybe can add up to a meg of mem copy. So we want to save that mem copy and just execute the batch remove of the elements from this metadata array. Uh, and yeah, that's where we're at. So the ball bearing pipeline idea is that we're removing some elements from one node, some elements from another node, and then we want to compact them. So we were thinking of, you know, let's let's have like a an array of slices of the source source slices. Um, and there's gaps between them in the pipe. And then at one point we just tilt it and copy all the stuff so that they get compacted. And then there's an edge case where sometimes we don't want to copy between nodes because the nodes are already full enough. Uh, yeah. I don't know, how's it going with cool. the boiler, boilerplate? <laughs> um, pretty good. I just kind of started getting to non-boilerplate stuff, which cool. is the new remove elements function. Yeah. Um, I think we just want to get rid of this because we were doing it in reverse before to like kind of slightly um, optimize this without actually doing much work, yeah. um, which I think is not actually that great of an optimization. So I was just going to get rid of that and just go forwards like we do for the other one and use essentially yeah. the same loop we use for insert, Yeah. Um, which I've just copied and pasted here. Awesome. Um, we have different inserts here though slightly. Um, yeah, count greater than zero. Yeah, this one, these are, these are the same actually. We already have them there. Um, yeah. I also add, I change this, fix the asserts. You already use count as well as absolute index. Yeah. Um, we actually copy this one up. This is the one that we say it's in bounds of the, of the array. Yeah. This one can be up here too. Why not? Yeah. Um, count greater than zero can also be here. Oh, and we, we can also add another one um, that array node count is greater than zero. That can go into the top it one is. as well. Oh, yeah. We've got, we've got these down here already, but we don't have them up here yet. Yeah. Um, maybe that should be first. Array node count is greater than zero, then we've got count bounds, and we've got absolute index plus count bounds. Yeah. And I think those are all the same assertions now. Yeah. I guess it's so, not terrible. It's no, it's twice. Cool. Nice. Yeah, it's fine. Because you never know. Maybe we mess up in the outer loop, and then the inner loop catches it, or 
or if we catch it first yeah, yeah, in the exactly. outer loop, we're closer to the call site in the stack trace. Yeah, it's totally possible you mess up the outer loop here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So remove so, elements batch. Yeah, crypto yeah. code, uh, the compaction is just an ongoing process. So new stuff is coming in and we're constantly compacting all the stuff throughout the tree. Um, but we're doing it incrementally as well. So that it's kind of, you can think of it as like the V8 JavaScript engine that's doing incremental GC all the time. And it's it's trying to make it as incremental as possible. So there's no stop the world. Um, that's exactly the same thing we're doing here, um, which is kind of new because a lot of LSMs, they don't do it incrementally. They do these big compactions, you know, in one go. And then you get these write stalls because now the disk is just, the disk bandwidth is exhausted. So the foreground stuff gets latency spikes, but we're just doing constant um, compaction the whole time. And it's also nicely ratcheted. Mm -hmm. So we actually, there's control flow as well now because we, we, we ratchet the LSM tree compaction or we, we tick it as new operations come in. So it's all uh, tightly driven. It, yeah. We've got a, if you check out the YouTube channel, then we've got a nice intro on all of this and we dive into the compaction code. Also like the rationale for why we're we doing this. Yeah. Actually, I think we want to do, we do want to do the same kind of loop here where we, where we keep I, it's like the number of items left to remove because we actually always remove the same absolute index doing it this way. Yeah. Um, I think until we just keep removing batches until we reach count. And so then we do math.min node capacity. Um, this is just I then. And I is equal to count. Maybe we should give I a better name, like elements left to remove. This of course needs to come first. Um, well, you do. Actually, I can say there actually, it's just I yeah. minus equals batch now, I think. Yeah. And then that asserts not useful anymore. Yeah. Um, so we... this is of course wrong. Um, this is just to just be I. Or just batch. Batch is actually right. There we yeah. go. Yeah. This could then be a nice one liner. So yeah, we start, we set I to count. So I is like the total number of elements we need to remove. Then on, while we have elements to remove, we enter the loop. Um, we don't actually need an I32 here, crypto code, because we're going to stop at exactly zero. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, right. We actually do need an I32 here. So we, need, we want to put this first. Or mm, how do we have this before? We had it solved here. Um, it shouldn't wrap around though, because yeah, it won't wrap around. It yeah. it should it should be fine already. Yeah. If we well, were doing... well, when i is equal to zero, yeah. So at some point we'll have the case where um, i is less than batch when we enter the or i is less than node capacity when we enter the loop. Yeah. So then we'll re we'll remove the rest of the elements because i will be then be equal to batch. Yeah. And then we'll do i minus equals batch. I will be equal to zero. And then we'll exit the loop. That looks good yeah. to me. Yeah. If we were doing uh, like the typical reverse while loop, then we would need a I32. Yeah. We had to do this tricky thing here where we do the I thing first. Yeah. Um, but we don't need to do that here, I don't think. No. So we no, do that's... calculate the batch first. As well. yeah. and we subtract it afterwards. Yeah. Um, crypto, crypto code, are you good? Are you think we, does it make sense? Seems good to me. All right. Yeah. We'll leave it on the screen while we think about uh, what we need to do here now. Isaac, just one question with that. Uh, remember yes. like, the way we had it before, we we did the reverse. We did the reverse because yeah. that way we we also minimizing copies. I think we were actually not, that actually didn't really do much for us before. Yeah. 
because all we did was like make it copy one less element. Um, yeah. And not, like, we are we are already operating at batch level now, so it's good enough now. I think it simple one just doesn't matter because we're operating at batch level. That's that's much larger than, yeah. and so I think it's just not worth the complexity. No. Um, Exactly. Just keeping, keeping the absolute yeah. the same is kind of, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Um, crypto codes is all good, so we're good then. Yep. Thanks for checking us. Um, we always appreciate it. Nice. I mean, that's why we have all these asserts because we don't trust ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah, it's just fun to write asserts, right? And it it also helps to like expand our understanding. Like we now it forces you to to get to really yeah. know, know the the space pretty, and see it's, it's very clear what the free constraints are yeah. like here you so here for insert you can insert one past the end of the array but here you cannot remove one past the end because that wouldn't make sense you yeah. we have to be the maximum element you can remove is exactly the last element in the array yeah. you can't remove a non-existent element and then therefore we also require nodes to be greater than zero you can't remove from an empty um yeah. array yeah well so shall we examine what we do currently? If we just do cursor for absolute index first things first, which seems like the right thing to do. So we copy that. Um, yeah. And then we just remove the element and then we balance. That's our current approach. Mm. Just to recap. So the current to remove a single element, we just put our cursor. Um, Remove the, the single element we want to remove and shift the elements in the array. Then we update the start indexes. Then we um, check for an empty node. If we've just removed, if essentially if um, in, in a couple of cases, we can already create an empty node and then return here immediately. Yeah. Um, otherwise, we check if the node is less than half full and then do these two cases based on um, if the node counts together fit in one node or if they need to remain split between two nodes. Yeah. So, you know, we actually only do like one copy here and one copy here. So maybe this isn't too bad. Just leave it like a, leave, keep, keep this. I guess we do copies in here too. That's yeah. probably the actual thing. Yeah. In the insert node, we don't do actually do any copies, right? Um, that's when we do do copies. So that's this is just this is on the node data, not on the actual mm. elements data. This that's also we can't can't be avoided. So that makes sense. So these copies are actually not, these are not expensive copies. These are copies on the nodes metadata, not on the data is inside the nodes. So these yeah. are amortized over the number of nodes yeah. instead of the amount of data we have. So that's actually not bad. Um, I'm just wondering if we should actually just keep this code essentially and um, just say that we actually don't. I mean, because we did we ever find a case where we really do unnecessary copies by um, not splitting out this into two steps? Uh, yeah, if we go back to the whiteboard. So it could be, um, let's say, like, let's ignore the left column. Just look at the two columns on the right, and then the fourth one from the bottom, where you've got red and that. That's it. Yeah. And now let's say just yep. we re we're removing that red. Then it might be that yep. now we remove the red, we copy the remainder to the left. Then we see the node is less than half full. Now we combine it with the data on the right. Um, well, but to, I do, think to do that, though, we want we need to copy this data to here. In, yeah. And this data to here. Yeah, so it's fine. I so think you, I'm not actually seeing a case where this would be. No. At least not. It, it seems like if, if there is a case, it would be rare, but maybe I'm yeah. missing something. So right you now I'm inclined to really just use that same code. Uh, yeah, we, that, that was already that, like really quality code we wrote. And I like we just, that. 
Okay. Yeah, we, we just do it as a, now instead of removing one element, we re we remove the whole red block and then we shift and we do, and then we exactly. merge it with what's on the right. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think so too. The only case we need to handle is where the red block now spans two nodes. But we could, yeah, and so we, could case, we could actually yeah. hand, handle that in our outer loop to make sure that we only ever pass in red nodes that are within a node. I think that's not really a is big issue though. I think that doesn't make it less, it would be more efficient to just handle this inside the loop. And so here what we would do, so we can introduce an, 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 an uh, inefficient copy here. I see how it goes now. Yeah. Um, I think, or actually, no, we can't. We can end up, some data might get copied twice, I think, but, may, or maybe not. So, it's kind of tricky. Is, is this the case? Maybe this case? No, this case also only results in one copy. This case too. Yeah, because we always just remove the red node and copy this to the start of this array right away. If we, if, if, if we see that um, these nodes are, or one of these nodes is less than half full, then we copy the data from the second node into the first node. Um, yeah. If it doesn't fit, what do we do then? Maybe we haven't examined that case yet. Yeah. I, I kind of think, you know, if we just take our code that we've got and we, we allow ourselves, we don't have to be extreme on saving the mem copy, but we am, we amortize the mem copy by now doing removes at batch level, and even if we so say say now in that node we we remove that little bit of red, um, or say say on the left that that purple is actually less than half full, and then we remove that little bit of red. All right, um, I'm work, I'm thinking about a different case right now, but that we didn't examine yet, but. I think okay. this actually works out fine too, because what we do is we would see that this is already over half full, yeah. so we wouldn't have to copy anything into yeah. it, and we would just then examine, we would just copy this to the front of node, then cop and then join copy. between these two nodes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But there okay. is one you, one, you one case. Thinking? Yeah, thanks, Isaac. So um, uh, that that purple we can make small, uh, in that node, on the left. Yeah, we this can one? make. This uh, one. No, left. that one. Yeah, yeah, on the left. Uh, that one can be small. Then the red there can be taking it over half. So I'm, I'm just thinking of a very like sim simple one where we, as we removing elements in our outer batch loop, we make sure that we only removing within a node. So we don't, at the moment, that red on the right is actually just purple. We don't yet see it. So we, we removing, we only removing that on the left, yeah. So what we'll do then is we'll remove that on the left, that red, and then we'll see, okay, the node's less than half full. Now we'll copy this red across and the purple, and then the next tick around the loop, we'll remove that red. Um, so we have a little bit of an extra copy, but it, it keeps the same. Why? What is that bias though? I feel like yeah, that's it, not actually simpler than... It, it basically means we, can, case. it means we can use exactly the code that we've got. Um, we don't have to worry about red spanning nodes. Okay. We only ever remove within a node. So we, we're not 100% efficient on the mem copy, but we way, way better than if we removed one element at a time. We still get the nice batch. Sure, yeah. yeah. And the um, code is very simple. You handling this case better is like pretty easy, though, I think. Um, okay. I think we just do it. Like, it's just like, like maybe like one or two if statements and then yeah, I think it's not that bad to handle this this bit across two nodes, because we're always gonna we're either gonna we're always gonna end up with just two nodes that we need to join. That's the important part we need to realize. Like the input to our join algorithm is always gonna be one node that's less than half full, and then the next node which is guaranteed to be over half full. Um, we're never gonna end up with joining three nodes because in this case where we have two nodes, where they're both are less than half full, then we join these two together. Yeah. Um, if we end up with one node, so I guess these are the three cases. So we have the, this case where the two nodes are both less than half full, we join them together, and then yeah. we do the join algorithm on the result. 
Um, so there's going to be more like three steps here. Let's do all three steps here. Um, well, no, this is not even a step yet. I guess, uh, sorry. I think this is going to help us, though. I think I think yeah. I see the, the case we need to enumerate now. Um, cool. Oh. So if you're if you're cool, I'm a yeah. Yeah, if you, if you if you are keen for it, um, then then I'm I'm game as well. So this is it, kind of like the the first step. We don't even really care about the snare, so I'm just gonna leave out the split there, and then we just copy this one to here. Um, and then we delete this. We delete this node, and then in the in the third step, we then join this stuff. This is like one, two, three, and then, um, yeah, then we do the join algorithm on these two, and then we end up copying, like a little bit of this to the, it'll probably be, end up being more like this now. Yeah. We then end up copying more like this, that, that to there, and then this to there. Yeah. Actually, we don't even copy that. Well, it probably doesn't matter where we copy it to. Probably we end up copying it to there and just deleting this node. Yeah. Um, I think that's how it works out in practice. Yeah. So something like that. Um, so that's one step. That's where um, both these two input input segments, where, the, where the, we've removed stuff from, are less than half. Then we've got the case where one of them, the first one's over half, and then where the second one's over half, and then when they're both over half. Um, do you agree with those four cases? Like those are the four cases we need to handle here. With the... Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That that other like proposal, it's just an interim one. It's just another option, like. Because you see that yeah, one yeah. Is, is super simple. Uh, we, ba we we basically it's, take it's we not, take yeah we take our existing code that we've got, and we still we simplifying it so that we only within a node, we don't have to worry about yeah. Uh, and on top of that, now we literally just take our code instead of doing a single element, we do a slice, and then we're done, and we're still getting like ninety percent efficiency on the mem copies. Uh, I'm not sure if it's that, it's that high though, because I think it's common that we'll have we'll have um, these things be split between nodes, mm. um, but and we, so we don't amortize it as much as we could. Um, yeah. This this proposal still reuses all the existing code that's tricky. Um, we just throw out the we just have to add a, like a slight a small amount more of tricky code before we get to this part. But from this point onwards, the splitting code will all stay exactly the same. Okay. We we'll also have to set the nodes that inputs properly. Um, that's kind of right. how I'm seeing it. Because I want to get this code, because this code's really nice. It only does Q copies like we just saw. Yeah. Um, no, I'm, I'm with you. Let's go for it. Yeah. Cool. I'm, I'm... All right. So now we got the case where one of them is over half. Um, I'll just make it like this one, because it seems like a little bit a, a weirder case, where you then have to do this. This one's over half. Um, and so what we end up here, then, is we have um, hmm. This actually ended up being kind of not to scale, so I'll fix that up real quick. Um, just because this Danu, is fine for our purposes here, though. Danu made us save us so much time here with this uh, recommendation for Excalibur. Oh, yeah, this whiteboard <laughs> thing is great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's gone now. Okay, so in stage two, um, we've now ended up we actually don't even care about this node then this one just stays the same yeah we don't even we don't we don't even pass this one to the algorithm we don't even look at it um in here we just end up again with then so here's a case where we could save a copy actually um is we need to copy this thing to the front of the array before we pass it to our splitting or joining algorithm. Yeah. That's the case where we are, we're being inefficient now. Um, not the worst. But I finally found one. I'm happy about that. Uh, I knew there had to be one where we yeah. then make things inefficient by not doing everything in one step like we do with the um, inserts. Um, but yeah, we, then we then just join these two together in one node. Actually, we just do we do the join algorithm on these two things essentially. Yeah. And so here we've done one copy to copy to there, and then we'll do we we'll end up doing another copy to copy it into this node. 
that's fine. Uh, that, that's I think that's all. You if, don't if, mind the extra copy? I don't mind. Um, uh, what what we what we could do though is we if we have a slice of um, sources and we literally just we don't copy anything at all. Um, yeah. We we just load stuff into the pipeline and then talk and then copy it to the target nodes. And as a node gets more than half full, we don't have to copy um, that that one. I think will then get us where we don't have any copies at all. Yes, yeah. yeah. You have to change the existing code, which is maybe not too bad. The, the, the logic will stay the same, but it'll just be kind of like taking stuff from our target or input buffers instead of from... Yeah, I think it's actually pretty pretty similar. Yeah. We just, instead of copying from um, C elements or B... Or, um, from C elements, we would copy from like... We would, this, not, this, this, this would not be like C pointer. We don't. We, we, we call it like a different name here from above, instead of hmm, yeah. interesting. We did that because we call it like C pointer and A B pointer everywhere else. The reason we call it B and C here is because there's some optimizations where you might want to steal from A. Um, I'm talking about the elements versus pointer naming. Oh, uh, okay, okay, yeah. I'm not sure yeah. why we did that. It, elements is better. We should call it elements as well elsewhere. Because it's not, it's Probably, appointed, yeah. it's appointed to the actual elements, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, and so what we'd have as input to this algorithm then would be um, just kind of these two slices instead of the elements of these two nodes. And so yeah. what you're joining then is not two nodes um, worth of data, or two slices worth of data that happen to have the same property or ha yeah i think and that always yeah we can we can make it nice and general if we get away from the idea of um a b and c nodes we just have source no, we don't even need a b and c we just have two we only have two yeah but we yeah well sometimes okay yeah yeah no cool but we we basically just well, think of it as an array of sources source slices and we have an array yeah. of target target nodes and that's it and then then whether we've got two or three nodes as input doesn't matter yeah and so yeah and so i think yeah we can always just do we can always make it so we only have two slices as input yeah. so the only case where we need to do this joining is when we ha we um end up with a node that's less than half full. And in that case, we won't actually copy the stuff inside that node. That stuff stays at the start of this node. Yeah. So we can always compact like the little bits we have here to the start of a node and make like this bit. Like yeah. say this is actually less than half full. It's not really just demonstrating my point very well right now because it's over half full. Um. <laughs> cool. I think we've arrived at it. So what you, if I, just to check that I understand where, what you're thinking as well, that we're on the same yeah. page. So I think we're still thinking of a two phase approach. The first phase, we're going to identify the nodes that the that that get mutated, the, the 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 nodes where there's red. So those two nodes, then the stuff we will just shift to the left. Then after that, in the yep. second phase, we'll check: do we need to merge with the right hand node? And then we reuse it's that not merge, as merge code simple as that, but that's pretty much the idea. Because um, yeah. there are cases where we don't shift stuff to the left actually yet. If we yeah. don't shift anything to the left yet, well. It depends. Um, if we only shift them to the left, if they're less than half full, that's how that's what it is. Um, if they're both less than less than less than half full, otherwise we leave them in place. Um, in this case, so in this case they're they're both less than half. Then we just shift them. We shift the we shift the this one to the to the left. If this one was over half full, yeah, we would not shift. We not shift either one. We would just do the merge algorithm on this bit. Well, we yeah. could shift this to the left and then merge on this one and the next in the first in the following node. But but the thing um, is still still in that one, we are still going to do a copy. It's just a question of do we shift it within its own node or to the node to the left? Yeah. Well, we we always are actually going to shift it inside its own node. Um, but I'm, I'm, my my point is that if if this was over half full of purple, then we would not shift this one to the left. 
And so we have to, you have to check and same thing vice versa. If this one, if this one's over half full, we, we all, we'd also not shift, or if this one's over half full, we would not shift it to the left. Um, but maybe so it's, it's kind of, we only do, we only, we only shift unambiguously if they're both under half, hmm. then we, then we combine them into one node. I think if one of them's a, over half, we don't combine them to you. I think um, there's a curveball there. We actually do. We have we have to always shift them to the left because otherwise, if the left hand side is more than half full, the first node is more than half, then we decide the second node. We don't shift it to the first node. We leave it in its own node. But now that one is less than half. Now we need to combine it with on the right. Then both of those are going to be under half. We so we actually do want to no. compact it always to the left. Uh, otherwise, why, why are both of those the under half? Um, because there's a case where we, I think we can break the um, half or greater guarantee. If, if we stop okay. shift, um, so, okay, so let's try it out. Uh, so over there, let's do a case where we decide we're not going to copy the second node into the first node. We're going to stop. Like a case where the first node's got like over half full, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, some, maybe this one's better to copy. Yeah. So maybe most of the red is going to be in the second node, and only a little bit of red is in the in that node. Something like this. Does this look yeah. right? Yeah. For the inputs. Yeah, and then the the very right hand node, Isaac, that one. Let's make that exactly half full. Okay. And so what we're going to end up with here is this one won't be shifted because it's over half full and it's also in the first node. So that just kind of stays there. This one and this one will be the two inputs to our, to our merge algorithm. And because yeah. they fit inside one node, what will happen is we'll put them like this. Ah, uh, so it's fine. Okay. Yeah. And there isn't a way to break. Okay. Yeah, there's no way to break it. Yeah. It it, it kind of I think that at this point then we should go for whatever simplest because you see sometimes if it's just simpler to always move the second node into the first to make it full compact, it might mean that doing that. I think it's not simpler. I think it's worth reducing this copy or getting rid of this copy too because this is a potentially very large copy. Yeah. We don't. We really don't need it. Like it's not okay. that complex to just not copy it if it's over half full. Okay. Um, all we're, doing, we're we're just, we're just, we're just compacting the stuff if 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 the the input purple stuff from the two nodes that got stuff removed stuff um, together is less than a full node, we'll put that inside one node because we all, then and then if it that's if it's then over half full, then we're done. If it's less than half full, then we need to join with the next node. And if one of them is less than half full and the other one isn't, then we'll do the compaction yeah. on that node and the next node, or this node and the next node. Yeah. Um, I think it's actually not that. I think, it, I think it's a pretty simple algorithm still. And we st only, we always do compaction on only two nodes, and we use the same compaction algorithm we already have yeah. um, implemented. We just use input slices instead of input nodes yeah. um, for the data. Cool. And uh, I think that uh, pretty much covers it. Um, okay. Cool. Um, do you want to take a quick break and then come back and start implementing this? Yeah, uh, I think so too. Good, good time. So catch you in five. Sure. Sounds good. See you then. Cool. Cool.
Hey, Isaac, are we back? Yeah. Cool. Nice. You still happy with the approach? We yeah. Around? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm totally happy. If if you keen to, I'm I'm liking that you're happy to, to like really try and get it like. Optimal. I just want to get it right. You know, I don't want. Yeah. Like this is a pretty big copy. Mm. That we don't need at all, and so I don't want. Yeah. I don't want to do that. I want perfect code. <laughs> cool. Cool. Great. So yeah. Um, I think we decided the first step is just to, well, we just, we, well, we don't, we don't really remove the red stuff. We just ignore it. And so the first step is to look, um, how large the remaining segments are in both of the two input nodes. Oh, it's also the case where we only have one input node, in which case we just, we just kind of skip that whole yeah. thing. Um, that, that's why I was well, thinking this case. We... Yeah, I forgot that's about why I was case. thinking we make it general, like we have a, just a, in, a, an array of input slices, source slices. Um, yeah. And we just loop over that copy well, to the target. Array, I think it's just two source slices. That's kind yeah. of what it becomes. Yeah. Um, and we just have a condition whether or not to move it into the node. Or, yeah. The tricky part is then we need to also keep the track of the nodes so we can remove an empty node when it comes up. Um, for example, in this case, where we have our can two we... source slices. Yeah. And then we end up, when we copy those together, we end up creating an empty node that we need to remove. Mm. You, can you show me quickly again that big copy that we wanted to avoid? Just so I can this understand. one here. Um, if, we, that... if we naively just copied this into the into this array, or just to the start of its array, if we just copied it to there, then then that's a pretty big copy potentially. But we, we don't need to do that because um, it do would actually fit to... here. But that's what I'm saying. Uh, so we do have to shift it to the left. Whether it's shifting, yeah, we don't want to copy node. it twice. No, 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 we don't want to copy it twice. But I, I was saying we do have to um, copy it. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, sorry, sorry, we we talking about the like the hybrid approach. Okay. Yeah. 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 But so yeah, okay, cool. But if we if we have a like source slices and we just always. Um, moving it to fill up a node, then that's fine. We Do we need to yeah. stop early when the node is half full or, or can't we just fill up the node completely? Um, yeah, we can just fill up the node completely if they fit. Um, if all if both source slices fit into the same node, then we should just put them in the same node because then we're done. Then we, then we create the... an empty node. Yeah, that's what yeah. with the ball bearing with the ball bearing pipe idea. What I was thinking is, we've got these, we've got this this stream of slices, and we we want to move it into the target stream. And as we yeah. as we look at, as we look at a slice, we're going to see does it fit into the target? Yes, it does. Okay, we just do the whole slice. If it doesn't, we copy still as much of the slice as we can. And we leave, we adjust the slice that's in the source pipeline. Then that goes into the next node. But um, oh, it, has sure shift, it. it has to be um, shifted. It has to be shifted any any way. Uh, and it doesn't though. If if this if this doesn't fit in here, this is like only half full. Yeah. Um, then it won't fit in there. But okay, I guess this does need to be. But it, it, you see that, How much that would you purpose copy? still, we, we would just copy whatever to fill it up. Um, to fill it up to where, over half or completely full? Completely full, that's fine. Uh, because we do, that, that okay. purple is, is going to be, then the rest of it will end up in that node and then we'll merge it with the last node. Then we do the merge always on the last two nodes. If yeah. We end up with two nodes at the end. Yeah. Okay, is that starting to make more sense to me what like why you're saying that um that, that that was what i thought with the ball bearing thing i just didn't explain the thing that we look at the source slice 
And if it doesn't fit, we adjust what's left in the sauce slice and keep going. But I thought it's just very simple that way because we're just literally filling it up and then we do the merge yeah. at the end. Compact to the left. Um, so let's see, where's the case where that doesn't do what we want? Is there one? Um, I mean, even this case, I'm not totally sure that that's what we want to do. It's like in um, this case, it would be why, simpler why? to just we, we wouldn't we don't actually the simple actually what we want to do here is not actually do that at all though. We want to just ignore this node, and um, do the compaction on these two nodes because this one's over half full and this one's less than half full. Do you agree with that? Um, yeah, we could. So we could just have some logic where we where we stop and see, okay, we now at a point, but we do, we do still have to shift that second node's purple slice. That is still a copy. Uh, yeah, but we don't then, but then we uh, don't then have to do a second copy. So what the, yeah, the waste yeah, in the copy yeah. is not the copy of this, but then copying this stuff as well. Yeah. But yeah. We don't actually have to do that at all. Well, what we yeah, want to do so is just to cut off a, like, a little bit of this and stick it over there and then shift this to the start um, yeah. and end up with, but we, we, well, we can still use thing. that. Yeah. We can still use that pipeline idea. We just add an optimization on top to to realize that we can rebalance. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So we don't want to copy yeah. when when one of the nodes is already over half full. We don't want to touch that. Then we just yeah. want to, because um, then we're already done with with our stuff. We already have one node that's less than half full, and yeah. all the other nodes. Because well, we want to end up with we, the tricky part is that we can't end up with two nodes that are less than half full. All we need to do is ensure that we only have one node that's less than half full. And so really all our pipeline needs to do is to see if both, if if we have two nodes that are less than half full, and then if they are both less than half full, combine them. That that's yeah. the, all the all this pipeline, this pre-processing step does, and delete the empty node. Otherwise, we just we, if we have these two slices inside of one node, then we just put those that we just copy that to the beginning. That's that's always the thing right thing to do. Um and otherwise, yeah, so let's let me write out the steps now. Um I think we want to just enumerate these. So, um, um, if um, data is if data is removed from only one node, um, shift. Um, or compact remaining data within node. In node, to, within node, that just means um, in this case yeah. where we have this, we copy this to here. That's just kind of yeah. the only pre-processing step we do in that case. Um, and then two is do um, merge algorithm on um on node and next node okay if data yep. is removed from two nodes over oh, here oh, i got missing d and so then here what are the three cases i think we've got um the case where node one or there was so it's the where the data is less than half on the first node and the second node then we can pack them into one node that's the first case here um if um meaning data in both nodes is less than half the node um compact into first node and delete second node. Yeah. That's Where kind of long. Compact is just missing a C before yeah. the last T. I saw that too. Cool. Otherwise I'm doing pretty well though. Okay. If remaining data is both nodes are less than half the node, compact into the first node and delete the second node. Otherwise, um, then we otherwise we have the case that only the one of them is over half full, and then we just do the um, now. So 
Yeah, so it's now it's just um, two. Now we have exactly one node that exactly or zero to one. Um, we get it's not exactly one. It's zero to one nodes that are less than half full. Um, if um, a node is less than half full, um, compact with Hello and welcome. Okay. Is that all it is? I think that these are all the only steps. I think that's all the preprocessing we need to do to arrive at. Um, yeah. We did both nodes is less than half the node. Back into the first node and delete the second node. But that's all we need to do to get down to this case where we have zero to one nodes are less than half full. In this case, the other cases are either are one of the nodes already being at least half full, in which case that's fine. We can then compact using that node or the next node, depending on the ordering. Um, yeah. I'll merge our so final we step. Still like need to copy. Um, we need to do some copies here um, to move the data to the, to the start of the node, potentially. Um, yeah. That we want to avoid, but this this but that's kind of like an implementation detail. I feel like this this is like the high level overview, um, and it doesn't really tell you where you move the data inside the nodes yet. Just kind of like where to put the nodes. Yeah. But I think this is enough for us to start. Yeah. To get our control and flow. Isaac, for yeah. both branches, the last step is actually the same. It's it's yeah yeah exactly. Yeah. And so really, this is the special case, and then we kind of join to the same branch here. Um, yeah. So I, I, actually, I think I need to add this this step into the second branch, actually. Compact remaining data within node. Um, so if remaining data in both nodes is less than half the node, compact into the first node and delete the second node. Um, and so if, otherwise we just, actually we leave the data where it is, um, I think. This is the case, I'm, I'm thinking about this case again, where we have this data here. Um, we want to actually do the compaction on this data um, without copying it. Yeah. So on, yeah, VS Pecky's got a question on difference between LSM tree and forest. So forest is a new tiger beetle idea. And basically we make a LSM tree cheap enough uh, in terms of memory allocation and, and everything um, it becomes so cheap that you can have many of them. And then the database, the storage engine is actually many LSM trees and you get all these advantages from that. But we go into that. If you check out our YouTube channel, uh, Tiger Beetle on YouTube, then you'll see the intro introducing Tiger Beetle's LSM forest. All the ideas are in there. Um, yeah. Main advantage is that each, each tree only stores one type of data then, and it's a fixed size type of data. And so you can have just better um, like data compaction or, or better a data to um, storage size ratio inside that tree and also faster query times because yeah. you already know the tree you're going to look in based on the type yeah. of data you're querying. Yeah. Um, the, the big big costs for LSM trees are read amplification, so how fast is to find stuff. And the other big cost is write amplification, that data has to be rewritten, rewritten, rewritten. As you start splitting your data into disjoint sets, then the performance characteristics of the different data distributions can be exploited. Because some data is just immutable, you never rewrite it. Uh, so you start getting better write amplification, you get better read amplification, because you can just find stuff, it's all in its own tree. So you get, basically you've got lots of smaller haystacks, and each haystack has the same type of data. And you'll find then that often you'll get big haystacks, like for Tiger Beetle, our big haystack is all the transfers. And transfers are immutable, so there's no need to rewrite them all the time. Uh, so that's why keeping transfers separate from accounts is a great idea, because accounts are very small, and they're churning all the time with balance updates. 
so if we were to just lump it all together into a single tree, we're going to be rewriting all this massive transfer data. And now, yeah, that's not an not a issue anymore. Okay. So I think we agree that the first check to do is just to see if the data is being removed from two nodes. And so yeah. we do, to do that, we just add the count to the relative index and check if that's greater than the count of that node. Um, yeah. Count is the number of things we're removing. Yeah. Um, do we, then, want to do, do we want to do the one node case first? So if, if it's less than or equal to. Sure, we can, we can just say to do here. I think this is the special case though, actually. So okay. I think the code like after this point will become the same for both of them. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking about this compact remaining data within node. Okay, so maybe we should, okay, yeah. We could do that for case first. I think then we can just kind of see how the, the control flow fits together at the end. Um, so if this then actually the inverse of that check. So cursor, sir, well, cursor dot relative index plus count is less than or equal to ray dot counts. I love your way of thinking about um, indexes and counts and like how you convert between them by adding a count to an index. Uh, cool. I've started getting these things right a lot more often. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I've only sort of started to articulate it properly, like now on these streams, you know, just watching and uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that's the because like the convert the index to account, then you use this one. You use that with counts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like what you were doing. Be... With, um... Oh yeah. Yeah. Cool. Sorry, I just yeah, got so... it. Yeah. So. I think it's your idea. You've got to explain it. <laughs> or, uh, shall well, I do it? Okay. Yeah. You you explain it, and then I can I can uh, see okay. how to really explain so it. With with, so with indexes, <laughs> um, since we always use zero based indexes in like most programming languages, um, we then use like a less than operator to compare them with like the the end bounds of an array, which is a, a count usually. Um, that's because you're comparing index to account, so you're kind of like off by one because of the zero-based indexing. But if you then add a count to the index, you're then comparing two counts because um, adding a count to an index just converts that to a count somehow. Um, <laughs> and so then you got to use this operator. Um, and there's like, it just kind of helps you, there's just like some rules of thumb here to like to help you eliminate the off by ones that you commonly see when doing stuff like this. Um, yeah. You want to add anything to that? So, you probably have some. No, you've got it. Basically, the idea is just to think of an index as a type and a count as a separate type, um, so that whenever you start doing stuff together with them, the in, the index gets um, yeah. But I think you've you've basically said that. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that that whiskey um, architecture. So we we huge fans of Wisconsin Madison, all their storage fault work. Uh, so that whiskey paper Isaac and I were looking at as we were getting into this, um, because that's a fantastic way to reduce write amplification, separating the keys from values. It does mean, though, that your range queries are a bit slower. So they worked very hard to do like, you know, exploit parallelism of the SSD to fix that up again. Um, and it's also a bit more complicated to code because you're now maintaining a log plus a LSM tree. And you've got to do GC of the log and it, and so that's why we just figured, well, let's just do the LSM tree and we'll just keep all our data separate. Um, this is the same idea, but we don't have to then do a log like Whiskey does. But Whiskey is, yeah, mm. it was a huge inspiration. There's another paper also that can give you excellent gains with write amplification called hash, you know, it's called LSM tree, but tree is spelled T-R-I-E. Uh, we were almost going to do that, but the reason we didn't is because you can't do range queries, and then we can't do indexing. So. No. Uh, should probably make a variable for this, but I'm just not going to yet. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this the first thing to do is just copy. We can just do the copy right away and just copy um, the second slice. We're doing this case again. Uh, this case. Yeah. So we're yep. this program I'm doing right now is writing this copy. That's all we yep. do here in this case. Um, 
And both these slices might be zero length, but we just handle that. We don't have to branch there. So we just go zero yeah. length copy in that case. Yeah. Um, okay, that curves node. Um, so what's this going to be? The destination is going to be at relative index. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm making a variable for this. Um, this is just not a good idea. Um, or elements, so just like a local, so we can just kind of call it like that, I think. Um, I got awkward. Elements. And we're copying from um, elements cursor dot relative index plus count. Um, okay. That's our copy to compact remaining data within node. And then we're kind of done, I think, for this path. It's the, it's the only pre-processing we need to do here. Um, because now we've now we've ended up with um, just one node that's less than half full, potentially. And one node, and then the next node is guaranteed to be at least half full, unless it's the last node, in which yeah. case we handle that, of course. Um, yeah. yeah. Nice. So we, yeah, we're going into elements at relative index and we're getting rid of stuff from there. Uh, we want to copy the tail after it. Um, and we want to go up to what is in the node. Um, so we don't do too much correct copy. We're not doing copy backwards. I think that is correct. We're just doing. It's, cor it's or, correct. Or is yeah. Yeah. Best pointer must be less than or equal to source pointer. Indeed, we got it right yeah. this time. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah. And then, so after this, we then just have node and next node. I think we might need some variables here to like as inputs to our um, compaction routine. I think we're gonna figure out what those out, figure out what those are though as we do this as we do this part. So now we're gonna. This is now like the inverse of this. So this is now the else branch. Um, so I'm gonna, you think it's a good idea to like kind of just copy these control flow bits, like copy the bits of comments that we... Yeah, uh, this is great, Isaac. Um, it's a good approach. Cool. So then we kind of like document our, our high level control flow here, but then we also have the comments just like here so you know which parts of the code that refers to. I think it seems nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Then, if remaining data is in both nodes, it's less than half the node, compact into the first node, delete the second node. That's the case we're doing now. Um, then we'll have to, I think we might have to add some more comments for the other two cases we can have here, where like the first node is like less than, or it's over half, but the second one isn't and whatnot. But the first thing to do is check if um, remaining data in both nodes is less than half the node. So the remaining data in the first node is going to be um, cursor dot relative index. Yeah. Relative index. Um, plus the remaining data in the second node is going to be node count. Um, a, a, a array counts minus relative index. Your relative index minus array counts, right? It's relative index plus count minus mm -hmm. array counts cursor node, I think. Yeah. So the amount we go beyond this. Yeah. Oh, but then oh, I've, I've left myself up there, I think. This, this is then the number of elements being removed from our second node is like the be this array counts minus minus the other minus two. this. Then we also need to subtract that from the array counts of the second node then. 
I don't see a better way to get that though. Maybe that's just how you've got to do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, has remaining. Um, all right, so let's just let's make our slices first. Let's do it like that. Um, then we can use the slice lengths here. So remaining a, I'm just gonna call it a for now. We can change it if we want. Um, but that's yeah. the first of these two nodes. Um, this is just gonna be um, elements. Elements A, okay, I guess I need this. Elements A. And we know this is in bounds because we've already asserted that this count is valid. And so this could be the last node, but th yeah. this won't be out of bounds. Can I take a look at that assert up top, Isaac? Of course. I just want to lo load it in. Uh, so it's the index of the last node. Yeah, we basically we compare absolute index plus count to the very last index in our whole array. So it's got to be in bounds. Yes, crypto code. The cursor does get invalidated um, if we insert or remove nodes. And so it gets invalidated inside this function, but it hasn't been invalidated yet because we haven't inserted or deleted any nodes yet. It's yeah. just um, a node and a relative index, though, inside the node. Um, and if you want to like browse along this code after working on this, our code is, is online on like the LSM trees and more branch of our Tiger Bill repo. Yeah, and it should be I'll up to date from what we finished yesterday, but you won't see the new code, of course. Um, I'll pop it in the, the chat for us. Uh, There we go. And so we will invalidate the cursor shortly, um, yeah. but that's a good, we good haven't thing done to remember. Yeah. We haven't removed anything yet. Yeah, it's definitely good yeah. to remember because yeah. in the public API, we just say cursors are invalidated by remove elements and insert elements. But now we're like inside remove elements, so we've got to like think about that and like yeah. when we actually validate it inside this function. Yeah. But actually, I think we're going to keep this cursor valid for the whole function because this will be pointing to the node. Well, at least, at least until we rem we actually do this the the removing algorithm, because yeah. we don't really remove the first node. I don't think. We'll see. Um, we can we can also start remaining to a equals elements. Bring bring in our a and b, um, you know. We we've already Sorry? almost got it. Uh, we we can start to bring in also so that we're not relying on cursor anymore. We can have a equals cursor node, b equals cursor node plus one, like we did in the other yeah. other areas. Sure. Yeah. yeah, we can do that too. Yeah. But not not now. I think let's let's just keep going and see. Yeah, I think we just need to get more structures yeah. sketched out first, because there will be a point where we do need to remove a node and validate. Um, It'd probably be cursor node plus one that gets well. We'll see. Yeah. Elements a. This is up to relative index. And then remaining b is going to be trickier. It's me elements b starting from. Um, it's starting from. Array. Counts. For cursor node. Minus cursor of index plus count. These are in parentheses. Um, maybe, so maybe I think this, this, just... needs, this should be a, a variable, I think. Yeah. Oops, that's the wrong thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, relative index plus count, we're using it quite a lot, even in the outer branch as well. Um, I was going to do this whole thing as re remove from DB. Um, okay. Maybe that's not good, though. Or we could call it start anything um, meaning B. Yeah. You see, like in the first on line 358, we've got relative index plus count. 
and 365 relative index plus count and here relative index plus count okay. here. maybe if, so if, if we, we just give that variable name that's kind of short then it we might just work out the line length here yeah if we just replace this with um we've only we're actually already 100 so maybe it won't work out very well <laughs> okay yeah maybe let's we're not have to wrap this stuff maybe we, can just... maybe we don't have to worry about it for now just wrap it and keep it all and then we come and clean it okay. up later sure i'm happy with that yeah. is this this is not right though um this is not going to cursor relative index it's going to cursor dot or no array it's dot counts plus. cursor plus one that's it there we go now this is going to be not this at all, but instead it will be remaining a dot length plus remaining b dot length. Um, and if this is less than node capacity or equal to node capacity, then we're going to compact these into one node, which means we're going to copy um, remaining B into elements A. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. P, um, A, And I realize we also need to copy, we need to update counts here properly. Um, yeah. We need to fix the metadata before we do the, um, the, the merge algorithm, I think, because that relies on the proper metadata. Yeah. Or at least currently it does. Maybe we should change it though. I'm not sure. No, we, we should do it like to avoid time of check, time of use. We should, yeah, as soon as we move stuff, we must get the metadata, you know, correct. Yeah, I think you're right. So we'll, we'll have to, we'll leave um, some x, x, x here. Hey, Nipsey. Um, elements a cursor relative index, um just dot dot and then from this will then just remaining b to that slice and that's that I'll probably put some online even nice and then we're gonna update to metadata so that means we're gonna and we're, and we're gonna delete b completely yeah. so Yeah. Uh, the first thing to do, I okay. think. Yeah. Sorry. No, no um, I think that's good. Let's let's keep going. So two delete B. We need to set the count to zero, though. I think. So we're essentially doing like this. Oh, we, yeah. Whoa. We just we just write we just wrote this exact code. Um, yeah. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> what does that tell us? Should we just be doing two merges? Is that what we wanted to be doing? We just need like a merge algorithm we want we want twice. That's what. I, so it, it would be a little no, bit less efficient. No, we don't. Because we, we don't. Actually, we don't want to do copies yeah. of the first merge if we don't have to. That's why we don't want to do it twice. That, that's that's why. Uh, otherwise, yeah. if we were okay with that, we could just alter our outer loop. Um, that calls remove batch just to make sure we don't exactly, spam yeah. removes across nodes and then we do two merges then we just reuse all that code yeah but i decided to be picky and try and get rid of this extra copy um. no it's it's awesome yeah it's great sometimes like i don't know there was some earlier stuff where i was saying okay let's push let's push further let's go all the way you know and now today you're saying okay let's do all the way so, yeah. um Nipsey asks, does the segmented array work similarly to the one that used to be part of Zig's standard library? Um, I'm trying to remember how that one worked. I think it, it worked pretty differently, though. Um, 
think it was similar, but it didn't. Maybe it had. I'm not sure it had batch inserts as well as we do now. I could. We should look a look at it there actually, because I forgot we used to have one. Zig yeah. the orphanage. I didn't it's realize. In here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Hey. Zig to the I list. Didn't, re didn't realize we even had one. This is this is a, a little bit different, I think. Um. It's not in there anymore. It used, it's in the orphanage now. Um, so, yeah. It's a, it's a good bit different, actually. So this has nodes of the node size is different based on where which node it is. This nodes kind of grow in increasing powers of two. And our nodes are all the same size. I've been thinking that Sorry, this just... segment array that we're doing the, might the, that was kind of like the this is the doc comment of like how to use it. Hmm. Yeah, essentially the you have stale pointers. Um, the elements are not contiguous. So it's more it's like a trade off between a linked list and a, an array list where you get stable pointers like a linked list, but you have better iteration speed because it's more cache friendly. Yeah. But um, it has O1, it optimizes for push and pop more than we do. We don't have an O1 push and pop. We've got like O node, um, number of nodes. Yeah. And we, yeah. we, we make push and pop a little bit more expensive to make iteration even faster and um, indexing faster. And to reduce memory sure how, use. And to reduce memory use, yeah. I think this probably doesn't have any hard guarantees in upper memory use. At least that's what I'm assuming. Yeah. I, think if, I think if you um, just remove all the items except for the last one, it's going to keep... It can't reallocate because it has to maintain stable pointers, so it must keep the last item until you remove... It can't actually re it can't reclaim memory very easily because it has stable pointers. Um, and we're just guaranteed stable indexes, not stable pointers. And so ours is closer to a ray list than this. It doesn't make the guarantee of stable pointers. Um, yeah, ours is, this is, yeah, I'm not sure if the, this name is great, but these things, these things are always just have terrible names. What we're implementing is usually called an unrolled linked list. Um, I don't know if you go to Wikipedia, this is like the Wikipedia page on essentially what we're doing. Yeah. Um, we were doing a bit of an optimization to make batch inserts and batch removes faster. Yeah, and it, it's a it is a linked list just where the node stores more than one element per node. Yeah, and we Perhaps. just happen to have, say that yeah, um, our number of nodes this maximum is constant, so we're just going to not do a linked list actually, and just store an array of node pointers instead of doing a linked list and having links between the nodes. Yeah, um, which makes things a little so bit. We easier can, to work it, with for us because we can and arbitrary there indexing faster um, yeah we've got like this index is pre-computed metadata so we can yeah just, just jump into the middle of the array very fast using a little bit of um yeah metadata. i don't actually know if this data structure exists i think we just kind of made this up for ourselves like this exact thing we're doing just yeah. to fit our use case um yeah it's, it's similar to an unrolled linked list, but it's not exactly that. And it's, yeah, it's got nice properties for well, our use cases. Yeah, it, 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 it is like, it is exactly an unrolled linked list. It's just that we've, we've moved the but it's not linked node list. pointers. We've, it's an unrolled linked list, but we've moved the node pointers out of band. Like we've applied DOD on top of it. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Except that we've, we've, um, yeah, and then we use a fixed a maximum length, I guess. That's yeah, the difference. Yeah, that's you could also do the, the node pointers out of bands with like re, with a resizable pointers array. Yeah. Um, that would be yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. But it's not really a linked list anymore because you don't have links inside the nodes. That's why I'm 
like debating that uh, point. Well, we, we do... was kind of defined by the fact that the nodes link to the next node. Uh, um, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So like. we've we've kind of I call it segment of the way is a good name for our what, what we're doing. Um, we still we still do have pointers to nodes. We've just moved them out of band into a yeah, contiguous nodes array. Actually, yeah, yeah, they're not linked like, anymore. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. You don't. Yeah, if you want to, the advantage now is that if you want to jump into a node in the middle, you don't have to go through all the nodes before it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and our like insert and remove times are definitely not as, are not they're not terribly optimized. We're making them a lot better than they were right now, to mm -hmm. reduce the a ton of unnecessary copies. But they're really we're optimizing for query for lookup times, and iteration. Yeah. Those are the two like goals. But they are, uh, Isaac, they are, like the inserts and removes are optimal for a segmented array. Like, um, exactly, yeah. And, and, for and actually, I would, and they're, they're I pretty would say good. It's, it's even better because when we want to insert at arbitrary indexes, we've got our, the way we've... Um, okay, yeah. So it's better than a contiguous array for insert times. You're right. So inserts and removes yeah. are better than contiguous arrays, but they're not at linked list levels of just constant time. You just update two pointers and you're done. Um, no, it's it's actually better because we store our pointers out of band, so we can do inserts yeah, in the so middle. Look up. Well, we, we can get to the middle node very quickly. We don't have to go all the way through. So and for, for a doubly linked to, list, there you can just remove the node without doing any iteration at all. You just have pointers yeah, to, the, uh, yeah, to the yeah. previous and next nodes, then you just adjust yeah. the two nodes immediately after and before you to point to the, each other instead of you, and then you have a node out of the list. And so yeah. it's not quite like that, but it's yeah. definitely much better than, this, than an array list or a yeah. contiguous array. Anyhow, yeah. Oh, yeah. shall we get back and into it, what it, we were doing here? Yeah, <laughs> it, it isn't worse than a segmented array. Like it isn't worse than an unrolled linked list. It's it's as optimal, oh, yeah, definitely even, not. even a little bit more. Sorry, I thought you were saying that it it was, I heard you saying that it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. the inserts and removes are not. It's, we've optimized what Wikipedia, what Wikipedia says it says about unrolled linked lists to be more efficient yeah. for batch inserts and removes. Um, yep. And just for general inserts and removes, since we have like a, a faster way to get to it, jump to an index. Yeah. Okay. So, um, these is, we're getting there, but these node names are wrong. Um, Maybe we should just make A and B now. This is yeah. a node and node plus one. Maybe this not. I think we should avoid doing that right now because we can we can make them for just for the scope. I think is what we should do, and yeah. um, not make them global yet. Um, yeah. A equals node times B equals node plus one, and then they'll uh, stay. They'll cause... remain valid inside the scope. Yeah, it's um, but then when we remove this node, they'll be invalidated, or at least B will be invalidated. A will still be fine. Um, we just need to do a cursor dot node with the prefix. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's. And do you want to do A equals cursor node, B equals A plus one? Uh, yeah. Um. I should do this one first. Um, oops, not that one, I think. Um, B. Yep, cool. Um, oops. Got that right now. Okay, and now for cursor nerd as well. Um, a. Uh, yeah, Nipsey, on YouTube, we've got the very early sessions where we were like sketching the design of this. So we went back and forwards. We looked at like a Eitzinger layout as an index, yeah. or we looked at a B, like a general B plus tree. We tried, and then in the end, we came to the segmented array. Yeah, we spent design. like about a week just not really cared and just discussing design for this for this data structure we're, we've been working on for a yeah. couple of weeks now. We're all actually like a month, I guess, if you count yeah. the design time as well. <laughs> yeah, 
we've we've been working outside of this as well on the manifest level, right? And um, node pool, and, but it's all all the manifest stuff. Indeed, yeah. Um, it's not just this one segmented array, but it's like the whole manifest level thing we've been working on and how this fits, how it all fits together. Yeah. Um, the, Okay, so we, now we've got remaining a length plus remaining b dot length. Sorry. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. I, it's, not it's good. All right. No, no, it's good. Um, so we all we need to do is update the counts, and then this will um, fix up. Well, the relative indexes don't change, so the indexes is fine. It's just doing the counts, and then this removes the pointer. It will assert the counts are zero, which is very good. Yeah. Uh, I'll say yeah. the nodes in bounds and all that stuff. Releases the pointer. Then, yep. Cool. I think we've got one um, bug there where we add to A's count. We add the whole of what was in B. But I think here yeah. we actually Good. have removed yeah. some stuff. Yeah. We haven't updated remaining... these counts. So we should just really just do eight counts A equals. Um, Remaining, remaining a dot length plus remaining b yeah. dot length that'd be That's better even better um, i good, cool. good catch there too i was only thinking just to add remaining b's length and just not even update a's count <laughs> cool yeah. all right so now we've got now we've now we've they solve this case where if main data is in both nodes is less than half the node, compact into the first node and delete the second node. That's that's solved now. Now we just need to um, now I think is where we, we need to introduce some variables into this scope, which we then set in either this branch or this branch. Like we want to introduce um, kind of the first node will be splitting and the second node it'll, if we're splitting at all. Um, maybe if we aren't splitting we should return from this in this branch. I'm not sure. No, I think we I think we want to. Um, I think we want to like say give us two give. Have here two nodes be assigned to you that then we'll get split. Um, and they can be or something like optional. that. Optional, though one of them can be optional even, or not. Uh, oh. Hmm. A good way to like set them off. And well, I think we should always assign to them. Okay. Um, what if we only have one node, not two, if the remove only impacts one node, not two? B is only removed from one node. Um, well, then it'll be it'll be we'll pass in that node and then in the following node in the list. It would be okay. just node plus one. Um, because then we'll we'll with the split we'll examine that node. Uh, but we, maybe we're uh, removing okay, from the last cool. node. You're right. Yeah. Uh, so we can't do node plus one then because we might be removing from the last node, so it wouldn't be valid. Yeah. Um, um, we could actually have an early return here in this branch for that case. I'm not sure though. Um, I'm wondering if we should actually like bring A and B out of this. Um, I think A and B is actually always going to be. Oh no, this is the case where we already where um, A is already over half full. And so we then actually want to do the the yeah. split algorithm on B and C, yeah. Essentially, I think our yeah. split only handles. Actually, let's 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 check that. Maybe we could do it at A and B and still. But I think we assert that B count is the one that's over half full. Yeah. We could are change we, that there probably. Isaac, are you thinking that the, this merge code we're looking at now, we're just going to copy paste up top and then Essentially, everything yeah. is just going to fall fall through to it? Um, there'll be a couple of slight differences because we want to avoid the copy um, in that one case. We are trying, okay. we're doing this for essentially. Okay. Because um, Cause what I think we need to do now is kind of select the, 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 the there's two things we need to like get out of this um, hmm. view process thing. We need to get the two nodes we want to merge, and then also the data within that node that's valid. Um, so I think we actually don't want to restore the metadata um, here potentially. Uh, I'm not sure about we, that. 
do we not just need one node, which is the first node in the merge? Because you always merge with the next node. Probably, yeah. Um, but we actually need, I think, to know for each slice which node it's coming from. Maybe we don't need to know that. Um, hmm. You should just try and keep, like, trucking away, like, one detail at a time. So now, main data in both nodes is less than half. We can pack in the first and delete the second node. We've done that part now. So now, actually, we... So maybe if we update the metadata here, then maybe we actually don't need to do anything inside the if statements anymore. And we just then... Hmm. You no, know, because here we need to look... This, we need to check if um, remaining b dot length is less than node capacity, or remaining. If, so this is that they're both that both of them together are less than node capacity. Um, actually, is this even yeah. what, we, what we want to do? I think it is. Yeah, that that's good. Um, the other cases here are now if remaining a dot length is less than node capacity. Or remaining B dot length is less than node capacity. Yeah. If they're both over node capacity, then we're fine. We don't need to do any merging at all. Yeah. And so, but only one of these two can be less than node capacity now. Um, so as we can assert that first of all. Yeah. Assert. Um, Like one of the nodes must be less than half full then, because oh no, this this is wrong. They they could um, both be they could both um, be over half. Over half, yeah. Oh, what am I even doing here? This doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah. And we've actually they both have to be less used, than capacity, of course. It, we've used node capacity on three eighty. Um, I think there we actually. Yeah. Is it right that we use node capacity there? That, that is right. That's right. We're seeing if they if we can fit if we can put these both in the same node. If so, we will copy yeah. them in the same node, then we're done essentially. Yeah. Um well no, we don't know if they're if they're over half or not yet. Um right. So now I think it's kinda of tricky still. They could they could both be over half of um Right. And so or one of them could be over half, or the other one could be over half. They can't be both, both be under half anymore, and so that's what I was, that's what I wanted to assert. Actually, I wanted to assert that remaining a dot length is greater than half, um, or remaining b dot length is greater than half. Yeah, greater than or equal um, to actually. Yeah, I think. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. I think we can like just make half a constant here. Yeah. This one actually has to be div, div exact as well. Um, yeah. Good. That's nice. Or half. Should we call it just half? I think that's fine. We just yeah. it's not that great big of a scope. It's not it's just local yeah. to this function. Um, I, like, I actually make this like more it. readable too. You know where where we sometimes do. I really like it where we can say div exact, and where we can say div seal, and that's why sometimes I feel if we do really mean it's a div floor, it's nice to actually write div floor rather than just rely on the. Um, I mean, we know yeah. it's a div floor. It's just then it's it looks explicit, like you can see. Uh, okay, they're actually thinking this is a div floor here. Uh, yeah. That makes sense. Um, yeah, but here we use div exact though, so it doesn't, yeah. yeah. Anyhow, I mean, now we can assert that one of these two things is true. And so if remaining a dot length is greater than half, so now we've got to just handle both these cases, handle both these cases, I think. And so yeah. um, really we need to get out of this, the, the node that is less than half. Um, that's the one we need to then merge with the next node. Yeah. Um, 
And so really we want to kind of like have a block here that we can then break with the node that's less than half full. Yeah. And then the slices. Um... We still have How to use shift. Slices? I think we don't need the slices. We can still do the copy inside here because we do have to shift it anyway. Or not. Uh... Um, so this it's just, it's just this one case, you know, it's this one. Um, where you don't want to do this copy. Because we don't need to. Okay. And so, yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah. This, we, we can do special cases pretty easily, though. I think I know, I think I see how to do it. Um, and so, what we do is we just have a slice here. We start off, we can start it off null, actually, just for safety. Um, also just we can use undefined as well because we can always assign it um but we can just start up we use null for safety so make an optional slice um so this is gonna be the data what do we what do we call this um data in next next node optional slice of t equals null and then here i think we're gonna put all this stuff we can also just make an optional node then well this well then we can assert that they're not null then and then lavm will get rid of the optionals probably if we yeah. would uh, we're having to do a release fast build um yeah which we won't yeah. so never mind no. um, <laughs> i was just gonna <laughs> add that i wish we weren't but we might use release fast in the scope, you know. Um, but actually, yeah. for this um, for this code, we wouldn't use release fast um, because it's control plane. Yeah, I just kind of want I wanted to avoid making a block because it's going to like make things into it even more. But I think it's just the best thing to do here. I'm just kind of make yeah. make a block. Um, const, um, I kind of want to just call it A, but that's then conflicting with the stuff we the A we use in here. You can but call maybe it trailer. The right name for it. A trailer, like the last thing. Oh, what I want to break here is the node that that might be less than half full. Okay. One we need to examine in our split. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So, so then we we don't want to call case, it A because A A only makes yeah. sense relative to something else. Uh, yeah, or, okay, yeah. We just call it node. Uh, yeah. That's just a temporary name. We can fix it later if we like. We can call it like merge node. Um. Or to merge. We don't actually know if we're going to merge it for sure yet or not. Um, okay. We can call it last node. It's not the last node. Okay. Uh, yeah. We call this uh, data posh. next nodes. We just, I think just leaving this node is the best I've come up with so far. Um, it, I think it, it doesn't it doesn't really say what it is. It's more like a like oh, a. Oh, it doesn't potential. at all. You're right, but I don't know how to say what it is yet. Um, yeah. Maybe it'll become clear as we like write the code that sets it. Yeah. Um, it's like a posh, partial node. But it's only it's maybe partial. It could be full. Yeah. So we could call yeah. it maybe partial, maybe partial node. Actually, we could yeah. we could also return early if we know the node's full. Um, yeah. And then we could just call it partial node. Does that sound yeah. better? Yeah. Or you know what? We could also get just get rid of this entirely and just call a separate function that does the joining. Then we don't yeah. need the nest. Then we don't need it. Like I think that sounds better. Um, yeah. Cause then we can then we keep that kind of separate and different function. And yeah. if we're gonna pass in that, oh, this, this is gonna make things much better. Yeah. Um, we then we also pass in the slice. Well. We don't need to make an optional slice. Then we can just pass in the slice um, of data. And okay, yeah, this is the way to go. Um, we just need to make, figure out the function signature for that function now. So yeah. um, so join node 
with next if needed <laughs> or if well less half full <laughs> has a function uh, name but um, maybe maybe we don't even need to make that decision in this function uh, we can make it outside whether we call it or not okay yeah that seems reasonable so we just call it merge nodes a and b or it's it's just literally yeah merge merge node with next with yeah with, with next. next and then we here pass. we allow well we're going to pass in first array self node um u32 here, here we can then we're going to pass yeah, in, we can, yeah we can call it node <laughs> <laughs> Here we can call it node, yes. Because yeah, yeah. um, now we've got a merge node with next. It's the node being merged. Then we've got here, the special thing is we're going to do data in next node. Because we allow the metadata of next node to be out of whack. Because we're just going to pass a slice of data in the next node. And then update the metadata after we do the merge. Um, uh, okay, so this is actually... Um, Maybe then we should just call it merge, um, and then it takes in a node, and it's going to take in data from the next node and data put it in into the, the node. node. But I also wanted to update the metadata of the next node. Um, well, it's oh, it's just going to delete the next node, right? Yeah. Um, cool. No, it won't delete the next node always. Um, because there's the uh, well, there's two cases here, right? In this case, we delete the next node. In this case, we just balance the data between the two nodes. We don't delete yeah. the next node. Yeah. So it needs to. Don't won't always delete the next node. Metadata um, in the next node may be invalid. It should just be next should... node data. Yeah. I think we should try elements not, next node. Not not even have the metadata be invalid. Not allow that. Um, just see if we um, can do we it. We have to though because of, we don't want to do copy this, and so there's no way to have valid metadata if your A is in the middle of the node. Ah, uh, okay, okay. That's that's why I'm doing this. Okay. I think it's not actually that scary though, because no, 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 um, cool. we don't read the metadata inside this function. Like if we look at here, um, we're gonna instead of using like C, C. So C is the next node here. C elements we have it's a slice. C count is the length of the slice. And what other metadata we do we use? Um, we assign the metadata, but we don't ever, we don't read anything other than those two bits of data. Um, yeah. We just assign the metadata and then modify the indexes, but we can also just assign these because we know that based off of B information. Yeah. So I think that's fine. Cool. We can um, always like clean up clean up the naming and interface once we've got it sketched up, and we can exactly. Yeah. yeah. We'll see how the code actually runs in practice, and so we can then clean things up. Elements yeah. next node. All right. So that's this. That, that can just be our. We can just say this magically does the merge stuff from remove element. And then we can figure out, finish the rest of this logic then. Yep. Cool. Um, this, this is slowly shaping up. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to get there. <laughs> and yep. now I feel like we're over the halfway good. point of like struggling to figure out how this stuff ties together. Um, yeah. What's nice also, Isaac, like with this, is we've got all the branches and we can just enumerate them exhaustively. You know, we don't have to. Then we just check we cover every case. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm laughing at the kids, Jared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a good one. Uh, and the funny thing <laughs> is, we also we do we're dealing with that third thing here too, with caching. You know, like metadata that we cache that we've got to keep it in Cache sync validation. Yeah. Yeah. Off by one errors in the number yeah. of hard things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Anyhow. Yeah, any, saying saying there's um, three hard things let's... and only listing two is uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Anyhow, 
let's do it for this case first because this one's pretty simple. Um, so this impact remaining data within node. So we do need to make the metadata of node itself valid when we do this. And so let's let's fix that right now. We all we need to adjust is counts though. Um, yep. We're just gonna say. Um, um array dot counts um cursor dot node equals equals um or just minus equals count that's the simplest way to do that yep. so we've removed count items from this node they're all inside this node and so that's that's all we need to do then we need to update it's the one... indexes of everything after this indexes yeah that's what i was going to add cool <laughs> um and here's the loop for that Like we already have a lot of this code. I'm really glad we did the single remove and insert cases first, because otherwise we would not have been able to do this correctly. I'm pretty yeah. confident in that. <laughs> it's taking us like 10 times as long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so it may feel like we're just kind of deleting that old code, but we're really we're just morphing it into something better. Yeah. And we wouldn't have been able to write this code without that. So yeah. removing an element requires the start indexes of subpoint nodes to be shifted. If removing from the last one, however, there's nothing to shift. Yep, that makes sense. And this is the only case. If we're moving from the last node, we don't have to worry about that in here, because here we assert that the node we're moving from is not the last node. Um, that's nice to keep in mind. And we're not using B here, we're using cursor.node. Yep. Okay, so there we got our metadata updated. I think that's all. Then we're just gonna do our merge. Or if, if, um, well, we need to now copy more of these conditions. This, this is the kind of thing we need to do. It's all that. Yeah. Good catch. So that you see, I was, I was kind of wanting to put this, these conditions in the shared function. So we, yeah. Then we don't duplicate them between yeah. these two paths. We, but we can, can refactor just... that in just a minute. Let's get the code done first. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Write it out in full, and then we'll come and see. Yeah, because maybe we'll, maybe this will end up being being pretty different in the second path. I'm not sure yeah. yet. It might be. Yeah. Because um, yeah. we actually don't need to handle the last node in the second path, so maybe it's fine. Um, yeah. Because in this case, we know that there's a node after our node. Um, yeah. Or maybe actually we don't, because we only know that in this, because we may have removed it here. So maybe we don't, actually. Anyhow, let's just keep going and writing it all out in full, and then we'll, we'll make it better and cleaner. Um, this is such a weird special case. I love it. Um, yeah. <laughs> thank you, fuzz tests. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last one is allowed to be less than half full. Yep. E equals array node count minus one. And now we're going to call our merge um, merge node with next. Um, cursor.node, well, we need to get rid of B here. It's not bad, though. Then we're going to, uh, we need to get all the data, the elements of, we have actually node elements function, don't we? Um, do you agree with using this function here or not? I feel like you're going to say something about that. What's it yeah, doing? it's probably better that we don't, that we, we yeah, minimize Yeah, I just want to see what it does. Yeah. We just, because we, this one is, is actually a tiny helper. Mm -hmm. But it's better it's to better make it, not e use it explicit that we rely on counts being correct. And, Oh yeah, because we do rely on the counts being correct, but we haven't touched them for that node here. If we then were to copy this down below here, we would be wrong. So let's not yeah. do that. Yeah. It also just makes us, yeah, it makes us more or less vulnerable to refactoring. I think. If we yeah. then modify that function to do something different, we it doesn't doesn't break our remove code. So array that. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna make a variable for. Um, or next node elements equals 
um, array.nodes cursor.node plus one dot question mark um, zero dot dot array dot counts. That's what it is. Um, yep. Then use that in here. Now it's too long, probably. Yeah, slightly. So we probably just make it. Um, I'll just call it next elements, maybe. Yeah, that's cool. It's still too long. Man. Um, we can always come and come and do that later. If we we can just keep going. Yeah, sure. <laughs> We're probably gonna forget though. That's fine. Okay, next okay. elements. We'll compile and do the right thing. So that's that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So on to this path now. So now we've got. Yes, yeah, so we've got actually two cases left now. We've removed the empty node. It'd be. Oh. You know what we've we've just done. <laughs> oh, never mind. We we haven't updated indexes here. We haven't, you're right. Um we should do that. I think we actually need to call this needs to be a separate branch. This needs to be like an else, because otherwise, um, B is no longer valid. Like remaining B is no longer a valid slice because we freed that or we've released that memory to the node pool, right here. Yeah. And so I think we should definitely make just make sure this is takes its whole whole separate path. Then we yeah. can unify some of this stuff later if we see a good clean way to do it without introducing bugs or chances of bugs. Let's yeah, just keep it separate exactly. for now. I was um, actually thinking so update what, we can do, what we can do it's there is that stuff, branch, yeah, that branch we've added, we can do else if um, remaining a is greater than half, else if yeah, yeah. remaining b is less than, greater than half, and then else unreachable. Else unreachable. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Um, so else if, just before I forget that. A is greater than or equal to half. Um, or that length. Uh, actually, we know we can't do it like that because they can also both be greater than or equal to half. Okay, then we um, can even add add that as well, just to help us think I through think it. I think we should. I think we should come back to this after we finish this okay. part. I think, I think here we actually might want to think a separate if to see if they're both they're both greater than, and then like okay. kind of do some other if statements there. I'm not sure yet. I think we should cool. finish this path first. Um, yeah. So we've now removed a node. Um, so B is actually still the node we want to target. Um, it's still the right index. Um, we haven't updated indexes at all yet, so let's do that first. That's what we're doing here. Okay. Moving element requires a start name of somewhere. We're not well. Hmm. We've now removed B, so I guess cursor B can now be the, the last node. Um. The cursor dot node is less than or equal to array dot node count. Um. This A is less than or equal to array node count, and if G B So is B the does we, do we need to adjust the indexes of B then? We do, because B is now the, the new the next node. Yeah. Because we've shifted all the nodes to the left. Um are you comfortable still using the B for, to refer to this node? Looks like we've no, removed we, it. No, it, it, <laughs> that's what it, I thought. Like we, we, yeah, we shouldn't have B in scope anymore after after removing it. Yeah. Um. So what do we do? Do we just say, 
we just stop using B or do we say const C equals B and then just give it a new name? Um, yeah, I'm kind of thinking we should have a lunch break. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea too. What do you um, think? Yeah. yeah, we've got a good place to jump back into. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Shall we, are you take? good? Um, I'm happy with half an hour if it's enough for you. If Sure, yeah, I don't need anything. Actually, yeah, I'm ready to get back going going to this. So yeah, half an hour sounds good. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, everybody too. Yeah, enjoy your lunch. So we'll see you like if it's lunchtime that side, of course. But like we'll be back on on the quarter past. Cool. Yeah. See you then. Awesome. Yeah.
Hey Isaac, um, we, we back on? Yeah, good. Felt like a long break, you know? Uh, Isaac, <clears throat> yeah, Isaac, uh, you know what, I think let's, I'm not, uh, Twitch isn't capturing your audio, so it's that same bug, um, maybe let's, let's do that, yeah. Yeah, cool. I'm going to, yeah. Hey Isaac. Okay, still, still not. So I think it's a Twitch thing. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. We'll be back on in a second. <clears throat> 